overhead of perceived exertion. Rated perceived exertion. RP Oh, we're going to talk about perceived exertion. If you look this up, there's a lot out there. It's been around for a while, mainly in the field of sport and exercise science. But the newer rate of perceived exertion or RPE scale ranges from one to 10 and focuses more on overall exertion. To keep things simple, I refer to all this just as perceived exertion. Okay, what is it? Perceived exertion is a subjective measure of one's physical effort during activity. Perceived is what you think, and exertion is effort. If perceived exertion measures subjective effort, that just means it's personal. An 8 out of 10 on the RPE scale for an Olympic athlete probably isn't the same as an 8 out of 10 for me or someone with lower levels of physical fitness. So if you did a physical activity and had to rate your effort on a scale from 1 to 10, what would you rate it? But before you start rating activity, you need to know what each level should feel like. Let's go over some examples and then we'll see why this might be useful. We'll use the scale out of 10 that looks something like this. Each level or range is generally based on increased breathing, heart rate, and muscle fatigue. Zero is no activity. Think sleeping and sitting. One is just a step above that, like daily activities and movements, taking out the trash, bending over to tie your shoe, but nothing that most people would consider physical activity. Around levels two and three, you enter light activity. This you can maintain for hours and is easy to breathe and carry on conversation. This includes activities like casual walking, very light resistance training, and light stretching. Nothing that really gets your heart rate going. From four to six is moderate activity. You are now breathing heavily and can hold a short conversation. You are still somewhat comfortable, but things are getting more challenging. This may include power walking or light jogging, light to moderate weight training, or continuous dynamic stretching. Seven and eight become vigorous activity. This will cause you to become borderline uncomfortable, short of breath, and only able to speak a sentence. Vigorous activity might include moderate jogging to running, moderate to heavy weightlifting, or advanced flow yoga. Once you hit nine, you'll be doing very hard activity. It will be very difficult to maintain exercise intensity and you will barely be able to breathe or speak a few words. It is unlikely that you'll work flexibility at or beyond this level. Very hard activity can include full running or very heavy to near max weightlifting. Maxing out the scale is a 10. This will feel almost impossible to keep going. You'll be completely out of breath and unable to talk. Flexibility does not reach these levels of exertion. Think of pushing personal records, going as hard as you can. All out sprints and absolute max weight lifts. You'll only be able to keep this up for a very short time. All examples that I just listed are related to me as an individual. I tried to make them as general as possible, but it may take you more or less physical activity to get to certain areas on the scale, depending on your own personal fitness levels. So how's this useful to you? One, if you don't know your body's ability and limits, perceived exertion can help you start. Two, understanding your body's limits allows you to participate in physical activity at an optimal level of intensity. Three, if you already feel confident in understanding your abilities and efforts, you can use perceived exertion or the RPE scale to increase performance and improve over time. Will activities or workouts always fall perfectly on a certain level on the scale? No, but this is a general tool you can use to label your average intensity. A lot of this comes down to just understanding yourself and being honest with yourself, but that's something we will always work on. 
Hopefully this was informative and straightforward enough to be useful for you. If you have questions, ask straight up. 